Kia ora. Let's see how we can use the fragmentation patterns to work out the isomer. So remember, the more stable the fragment, the taller the peak. So a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary, which is more stable than a primary. And that's because we've got more neighboring carbons to have an inductive effect. In other words, sharing the electrons with the positive charge on that carbon. And so that positive charge is distributed over a bigger area and therefore it stabilizes it. Similarly, for a carbon attached to a carbonyl or the carbonyl carbon or a carbon attached to a nitrogen, that positive charge gets shared over the carbon and the oxygen or the carbon and the nitrogen. You don't need to draw these structures. It's just to explain that sharing and therefore that support. So have a look at this. See if you can work out which is the more stable fragment. Right here are the answers. Hopefully you saw this was secondary compared to primary. This was tertiary compared to secondary. This was secondary compared to primary. And this was an acillium compared to a primary. You're also given a um, short list of masses with some possible structures. Don't restrict yourself to this, these structures only, but this is a good start. So look for the presence of the peak at these numbers and the loss of these numbers. So if you see you have a peak at 72 and 57, the difference between them is 15, which means you must have lost a methyl group. So let's look at three examples. This is the first one. Say we know it's a ketone from the NMR and the IR. So how do we work out which is the isomer? In this first one, the base peak is at 57, which means we can break it over here and get this acillium ion. We could also break it on this side and get that acillium ion, which is exactly the same. And that's why it is so tall. I've got two fragments contributing to this um, uh, frag, uh, to this peak over here. Uh, and I have lost an ethyl of 29 in each case. So if I subtract uh, 57 from 86, you can see I've lost 29. In this case, the base peak is 43, and we also have a very tall peak because we have two fragments contributing, just like over there. So we have this propyl uh, secondary carbocation, and we have the acillium ion, both contributing. And again, it's a mass a loss of 43. So if this is the cation, then that's the radical, or if that's the cation, then this would be the radical. We also have a peak at 29, which means we must have an ethyl in some way in the molecule. So here's the ethyl, and that gives a primary carbocation, so it's not as tall because it is a primary. And um, here we have a peak at 71 rather than 29, and that's because we've lost a methyl, and that has been stabilized by the carbonyl acillium ion. So we do get a peak there. Notice we don't have a peak over here because if we lost a methyl, we only have a primary carbocation. So it doesn't, you know, there's a very tiny peak there. Then notice, uh, okay, that's the loss of the methyl. And then notice we don't have a peak at 29. Um, we, it does show a peak, but it could be other rearrangements. Don't try and assign every single peak. Um, and that's, you can see, we don't actually have an ethyl in this molecule. We have a propyl and a methyl, but there's no ethyl. Let's look at the second one. We know it's a secondary amine from an IR, so how can we differentiate between the isomers? The base peak at 58 means if we broke it over here, then that gives us a mass of 58 with the loss of an ethyl, which is a mass of 29. The base peak at 72 means we have lost a methyl, okay, which gives us this carbocation. So we have that peak over there. We also have a peak at 44, and that is due to um, it breaking on this side. So remember, it could either break over here or it could break on the other side. And if it broke on the screen bit, we would land up with this type of um, cation. And so that gives you that peak over there. And we have something very similar where we have that same two carbon fragment with the nitrogen. Okay, with a mass of 44. And we have lost a propyl group of that 43. Okay, 
because it is a nitrogen, uh, we tend to see this distinctive peak at 37. It is a rearrangement, which you aren't expected to know, but it is useful knowing that if you have a strong peak at 30, you probably have an amine. Right, last example, alkane, how can we differentiate? So base peak at 43 means we have a propyl of some sort. In this case, we can break it here to get this propyl, or we could break it over there to get that propyl group. And it's a loss of an ethyl to get to that propyl group. Um, here, the same thing, we can break it, and so we lose the ethyl, oh, sorry, uh, to get the propyl, and notice it's a secondary carbocation. Here we have a peak at 57, which is not as stable as um, this one, and uh, that is from a butyl. So the bigger the molecule or the fragment, often the less stable is a sort of a general rule of thumb that doesn't always follow, of course. But that's been a loss of a methyl. And over here we have quite a strong peak at 57 uh, compared to this one. And that is uh, because we have a secondary carbocation compared to a primary carbocation. So both of these are secondary, so they're both quite strong. Whereas um, here, both are primary for this one and this, but here being bigger, it tends to fragment a little bit more. Right, and uh, finally, we've just to say it's been a loss of a meta. So hopefully that will help you in trying to work out what the isomer is um, once you sort of have worked out the possible molecule from its formula and functional group. All the best. Kia ora.